Hi, everybody. Thanks for listening. So again, we're reviewing the Akamai Control Center dashboard for the Prolexic product suites. We just went through the Security Center dashboard and all the different reports that come out of the analytics components. Now we're going to go into the Security Configuration Manager. So here you go over to the side menu where the three bars are. You come down to Security Configuration. Now, if Prolexic is the only product on your contract, then you would only see Prolexic. If you have other security configurations for other products, they would be listed here. So again, just select the Prolexic product portfolio. From here, you'll see the first thing is a container or a drop down menu. This again is referred to as a policy domain. The policy domain is just another fancy word for the data center's configuration. So the data center could have multiple configurations in it, okay? Uh, and that would be by design. So you could have multiple network segments within the actual configuration. You could also have one configuration that holds multiple data center uh, DMZs. It, it just really depends on the customer's unique configuration. Here's just a nice view, again, again, a, a summary of the configuration file. The last version that's in staging or that's being edited, the version that's currently in production, as well as a summary of the AS information, the prefixes that are configured, and also a data center label that would associate to like the proximity, most of the like, city state, you know, that the infrastructure is hosted as, as well as the scrubbing center GRE type, which we refer to as the routed access network, the RAN network. This is the new hot sauce. Now, I have special permissions where you, I get to edit configuration and add configuration, you as a regular administrative user, you will still not have this level of permission. Uh, the Prolexic configuration is a managed service. So all configurations in this current state require a professional services change. Uh, we do not allow any self-service change in this configuration for GRE. Now, that being said, there are a self-service capabilities within our IP Protect product, which is basically like a source net proxy. We allow customers to do self-service there. I'll show you that in a minute. As well as our Network Cloud Firewall, we allow customers to self-service their editable ACLs now. And I'll show you what that means in another recording. So first we're gonna go right into the production version. And at, few, at first you'll see again a summary of the configuration name, the last version, when it was updated, by whom, and et cetera. And you'll also see that it's actually configured, it's deployed, it's in service, it's validated, and it's in production. Again, I have a little bit more permission, so I can change some things, but I'm not gonna show you that. You will not be able to do that. Here you'll be able to see that there's basic information like the ASN configured. Um, what is the BGP information that's provisioned? Please don't copy my MD5 password. You can also set up uh, maximum prefixes advertised, uh, as well as set up warnings. Uh, features, that's a, that was a, a placeholder for an ACL manager that we're no longer, we're no longer gonna support. This will eventually be ripped out. Uh, but the prefixes here, again, what's configured and why. Uh, you'll see an example of the router configuration here. Again, this is uh, to be determined. We're building uh, a lot of cool feature functionality within Portal, so this is just a placeholder for that as well as the IP templates. The IP template is what is configured for that data center, as well as each tunnel and BGP session. So you'll have a nice way to copy and paste that as you start to build out a new infrastructure. Here is really where I point most of my customers to, which is the connections tab. Um, there's a few different ways that you can view this data. We have the topology group or the graph view, which you're seeing currently, or we have a grid view. So for the, the graph view, you can simply click on the, the actual jury tunnel and it'll bring up what this information is provisioned, how it's provisioned, potentially other types of local preference attributes that you wanna to apply to that configuration, as well as uh, you know the IPv4, IPv6 network space. What I like to do is personally, I like to go to the grid view and then I sort by the customer router host name. So that way I know what is exactly configured for this router versus what is configured for this router, et cetera, and et cetera, for this router, right? So here you can also expand each one and it gives you a little better view of the configuration of that tunnel. Again, some labeling, some IP information, what uh, network details are configured for the BGP space. What also I like about this is it definitely tells you what probe type. Now, 
There are two different types of GRE probes. There's the GRE Cisco Standard Keep Alive, which is basically a customized uh, pack, uh, uh, GRE probe that we built that's based on the standard of the Cisco Keep Alive, as well as an ICMP code uh, for a probe type. So we built this in order to give customers some flexibility. We also have an algorithm that looks at the default, which is our legacy which has a 30 second window for hold, and it has to have a minimum of three probes lost in order to uh, bring down the session, as, as well as a minimum consecutive probes in order for the session to become healthy again. And this can be tuned and tweaked based on what configuration standards you require. We normally recommend our legacy defaults.